Once upon a time, 27 years after the bombs fell, there were two people, a vault dweller and a California girl. They met and sparks flew. That's when things got interesting. This is their story. Once Upon a Wasteland, Episode 9, The Audacity of Doing This. I know that you want to talk to Knight Banks as soon as possible, but we need to talk before that happens. Please, have a seat. I prefer to stand, thank you. As you wish. We had teams on the ground almost from the moment Knight Carlson returned and told us what happened. They're remaining in constant contact, but we don't have anything concrete. They need to do better. I agree. That's where you come in. I'm at your disposal. Given your contacts, resources, and skill set, I want you to lead the effort to retrieve Scribe Valdez. To that end, I would like to grant you a temporary field commission, which would expire when this mission is over. Thank you, Paladin, but... It's purely a procedural matter. In order to put you in charge of Brotherhood personnel, you need to be commissioned as an officer, even if it's on a temporary basis. But before I do that, we need to have a discussion. A frank one. We don't have time to waste, Paladin. Every second we take... This discussion will not be a waste, and I promise it will be brief. What's on your mind? I know that you are very strongly, personally motivated to get Scribe Valdez back, and I suspect that you will do everything in your power to do so. That suspicion is correct. Including methods that run counter to Brotherhood regulations? If necessary, yes. On the record, I will reiterate to you that we expect you to conduct yourself as a Brotherhood of Steel senior knight, even though you would only bear that title on a temporary and acting basis, and that there will be serious repercussions for failing to do so. Off the record, well, I expect you to get her back. That's all. I understand, ma'am. Now, on to the second topic. Before I grant this commission, I need you to address my primary concern. I'm concerned that you're too close to this. Well, you may be right. I'd like to think that I can remain above emotion when I'm on the job, but... I'm human. I can tell you that I have a strong network of allies who stand ready to assist, and people with a wide range of skills who owe me favors. There's no resource that I won't use to get her back. That network is one of the reasons that I want you in charge of this operation. We'll need all the help we can get, and we don't have time to waste on dealing with layers of abstraction. Given all the movement around Flagrante Bello, we strongly suspect that is where Scribe Valdez is being held. If we can confirm that, it will allow us to focus our efforts in a way that we simply can't right now. Of course. I'll put my father and his assistant on that. There's nobody better than Charles at processing intel. Given the proximity of Fort Atlas to Flagrante Bello, I'd like to maintain the command center here. We should have all the resources you need. I believe you do, for the most part. There are some things I'll need to retrieve from my place, though. Body armor, a few specialized weapons, that sort of thing. Of course. I'll need access to comms so I can brief my father. I'll ask him to send Charles here directly. He'll likely want to work some of his contacts first. What about your mother? She has contacts at Foundation as well as the Free States. Both sides said they owed her after negotiating a statement of understanding between them. And I think it's time to call in that shit. We're combing through Brotherhood personnel right now to see if anyone might have a contact that can help us here, but the problem is is that the Morningstar's strategy has always been one of obfuscation. Indeed, security by obscurity. It's like chasing a ghost story. That's what makes his current actions so concerning. Beyond just taking Odessa, he's not only taking strong overt action, he's practically signing his name to it. That should make things easier, shouldn't it? On the surface, sure. But this is all completely out of character based on everything we know about him. 
And that can be... Well, it can be quite jarring. What's the word on the street? For the most part, people are too busy trying to survive to worry about any of this. His recent actions have been overt. They've been targeted in a way that hasn't impacted most people. Not directly, at least. We'll need to convince them that this threat is real, that it's serious, and that it's imminent. Have you seen indirect impacts? One of the most important things that my mother taught us as part of our diplomacy and nation-building curriculum is that small, targeted action can be vital to achieving diplomatic goals. And it's not a stretch to apply that thinking to less diplomatic action. Precisely what I was thinking. And despite our best efforts, my strong suspicion is that we've seen just the proverbial tip of the proverbial iceberg. He could have been laying the groundwork for years. Indeed. He may have started the moment people began returning to Appalachia. And if that was the case, his plans surely would have accelerated when the Scorch Plague was finally eliminated. I feel like your arrival threw a spanner in the works. It may have. It was unfortunate that we had so much to deal with from the moment we arrived. Super mutants under Atlas, putting an end to Dr. Blackburn's experiments. And to Dr. Blackburn himself. Yes. So, Acting Knight Kirby, what can I do to help? I'll need access to the prisoners for interrogation. Of course. Knight Banks was hoping to leverage your expertise in that area. This is a bit awkward. What is it? It's about Knight Banks, actually. About why I was so keen to speak to him. What's going on? Odessa has expressed... concerns about Knight Banks' recent behavior. Nothing that she could quite put her finger on, but he seemed... off to her recently. Explain off, please. It was more a general feeling than anything specific. She said he was acting suspiciously, disappearing for hours at a time, being oddly cagey about things. I don't want to jump to any conclusions, but... The timing lines up with the Brotherhood's involvement in what we later learned was the Morningstar's tech grab. I don't like coincidences. Nor do I. But I want to give him the opportunity to explain himself. He and Odessa were close, like brother and sister. So I feel that I owe him that much. Besides that, if we can trust him, he'd be an invaluable resource. He would. And I hope that he will. One moment. I'll get him. That was fast. Beth, I just got back. Are you okay? I'm managing, Casey. Thank you for asking. It's all hands on deck. Mum and Dad will be read in shortly, and I'm going to call in every favor I've earned out there. I wish Amanda was here. She has so many deep contacts with the various Raider factions, and I just... don't. We're going to get her back. Together. Just like old times. We always did make a hell of a team. I did try to find you, you know? After I got settled, I didn't know if something had happened to you. And when I couldn't track you down, I got to the point where I was afraid to find out. That was probably when I was with Amanda, and I'm guessing you didn't travel in radar circles. But for what it's worth, I never stopped thinking about you, and how you'd always been there for me. We were always there for each other. I guess I assumed you'd moved on. Hoped, even. I did. But I never stopped caring about you, and I never will. Nor are you. <sighs> Odessa's been taken. Amanda left, and I feel like both of those things are my fault. I always drive the people I love away. You didn't drive me away. Didn't I? We were never the same after I proposed. It was a lot to process. We were, what, two months from Reclamation Day? And I hadn't even turned 19 yet. I wasn't ready. I didn't want to lose you. You wouldn't have. Hey. Hey. Take a breath. I'm starting to wonder if you're really managing. I'm sorry. My most recent undercover op had... consequences. And the truth is that I'm struggling. What kind of consequences? 
I don't have time to fully explain right now. But suffice it to say that memories I'd mostly managed to learn to deal with are suddenly... less manageable. And emotionally... well... I'm just trying to hold things together and... not always succeeding. Then relitigating our relationship is the last thing we should be doing. Don't dwell on how our love story ended. Think about the one that's just getting started, okay? Okay. But I do think that we should talk, once we have Odessa back, I mean. After everything that's happened, well, I guess I just don't want anything to be left unsaid. Paladin, all due respect, I don't have time for this. You'll make time. What's going on? We have a problem. Oh no, what now? The prisoners are dead. With everyone being pulled in so many different directions, there was a miscommunication regarding guard duty in the brig, and, well, someone got to them. And who's in charge of guarding those prisoners? Night Banks. May we have the room, please? This won't take long. Of course. Night Banks, your sidearm, please? What? <laughs> Why do you need my sidearm? Just give me your sidearm, Alan. <sighs> yes, ma'am. Casey, with me, please? Yes, ma'am. Beth, every second we spend in here is a second we're not working on getting Odessa back. I'm going to ask you a very simple question, Alan, and I expect a direct answer. C can we dispense with this cloak and dagger shit, please? Say what's on your mind so we can get back to work. What's in this for you? It must be something big for you to betray the Brotherhood like this. To betray Odessa. She thought of you like a big brother. What the hell are you talking about? I have not betrayed. Don't. don't do that. You don't get to clutch your pearls at me. Three prisoners lie dead downstairs. The woman I love is who knows where, in who knows what kind of danger. Where do you run off to for hours at a time, Alan? Where did the intel on that first lab come from? It was a tip from a source. I didn't know the details, they just said there was some primo tech in that old lab and that we should check it out. That's it. What kind of source? The, the confidential kind. I cannot burn that source. Oh, come on. So, so we're really gonna play this game right now? Fine. Now, who's the actual spy here? I'll give you a hint. It's not me. I'm just a guy who runs around in power armor, cracks jokes, and cracks some heads from time to time. But you... But me? What? I just find it awfully convenient that you happened to show up right when we were checking out that lab. But, but I'm assuming that wasn't really a coincidence now, was it? Don't you dare try to make this about me. Oh, I don't have to. You've done a bang-up job of that all by yourself. But you're damn good at this, I'll give you that. Everybody here trusted me. Respected me. But you've even got Romani wrapped around your finger to the point where she's confiscating my sidearm so you can interrogate me. So go ahead. Ask your questions. Or shoot me. I don't even care at this point. Are you working for the Morning Star? Are you? Answer the question. What about Valdez? Was seducing her part of your plan or was that just a complication? Is that why she's gone? Are you trying to tie up loose ends? Answer me. No! I am not working for the Morning Star! Not good enough. <laughs> I, I thought people like you were supposed to be like human lie detectors. You can't tell that I'm telling the truth? Tell me who your source was, and tell me why you keep disappearing all the time. I can't! Then you're going to sit in the brig with those three corpses until you decide you want to cooperate. I... Ugh. <sighs> okay. I'll tell you. Off the record. Nobody in the Brotherhood can know. Not Romani, not Carlson, nobody. Deal? That depends entirely on what you say next. It's my brother. He was the source. And... He's why I keep going off the grid. Him and his family. Explain, please. Alex and I came here from Pennsylvania. But our paths kind of... Diverged. I guess. He fell in with a bad crew. The Blood Eagles. And I tried to steer him straight, but... 
Look, I, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. He did some bad shit. People died, and and some of it, now some of it involved the Brotherhood. You're protecting him. That's what this is all about. Yeah. The thing is, he. You know, he finally got himself squared away. He met a nice girl, had a kid. The, the problem is, he not only has to hide from the Blood Eagles, but... He has to hide from the Brotherhood. I've been doing my best to keep their heads above water until I can figure out how to at least get us off of his ass. It hasn't been easy. Jesus, Alan. Do you believe me now? <sighs> yeah. Human lie detector, remember? But once this is all over, I'm going to verify it. And there will be hell to pay if I discover that any part of your story isn't true. But at least for now, I believe you. Oh, you sound disappointed. No. I'm glad this seems to have been a misunderstanding. But it means that we either still have a mole, or we have a new one. And if it's not you, we have no idea who it is. What are you going to tell Romani? That I can state with confidence that you are not a compromised asset. Fortunately for you, we won't have time to get into the details. But I think that's going to have to happen sooner than later. Yeah, I do too. We can try to figure something out together. After Odessa's back here, safe and sound. And after I've verified what you've told me. You've got yourself a deal. But right now, we have work to do. Let's get the Paladin back in here and figure out how we're going to find her. And then we'll figure out how to rescue her. I'll assemble a team so we're ready to move out as soon as we have some actionable intel. We're gonna get her back, Beth. You're damn right we are. Oh... What happened? Where am I? Try not to sit up. You took a nasty spill. Where's Greg? The person I was with? Sorry, you were the only one they brought in. Brought in where? By who? Hey, hey. What did I say about sitting up? You need to rest. My head is killing me. Here, have some water. Thank you. I'm Odessa. I'm Dex. Dex Stewart. It's nice to meet you, Odessa. Are you hungry? I... I really don't feel like I could hold anything down right now. But thank you. We'll get you fixed up in no time. Who's we, by the way? You're not Brotherhood. You don't look like raiders. You're clearly not blood eagles. Free states? Nah, none of those. We're unaffiliated, I guess you could say. Unaffiliated? We're just kind of here, you know? I kind of do, yes. Where's here, Dex Stewart, unaffiliated? Somewhere safe. I'd feel a lot safer if you stopped being... Ah, Evasive. Hey, hey. I'm going to get a doctor to take a look at you now that you're up, okay? Okay. Here's your patient, doctor. Odessa! I'm so glad you're awake. You had me very worried. Well... I'm still kind of worried, and Dex Stewart unaffiliated here hasn't been much help. I... Wait, Dr. Flagler? What are you doing here? And where is here? All in due time, my dear. Right now, I need you to rest. How's Lily? Oh no, Beth. She must be worried sick. And everybody back at Atlas, too. I need to get in touch with them to let them know I'm okay. Where's my radio? It's okay, Odessa. You'll see her soon, I promise. But right now, I need you to stay in bed. No sudden movements. I don't think that will be a problem. Every time I sit up, it feels like somebody's trying to shove an ice pick through my temple. I'll give you something that should help with that. It'll help you sleep, too. Thank you. Isn't that dangerous? Sleeping after a concussion? No, Dex, but I appreciate your concern. That's a common misconception. In fact, given how important rest is to recovery, not letting someone sleep after they've been concussed can be counterproductive. How about you two catch up, and I'll go get it for you. Just write the name down and I'll find it. That would be great, Dex. Thank you. 
What happened to me? It feels like I drank too much last night and I'm half hungover, half still drunk. You, my dear, had quite a little adventure from what they told me. You were attacked by a small group of blood eagles. You fought back, but there were too many of them. They restrained you and knocked you out with a chem. Oh, no, did they? No, thank God. They were carrying you off when they crossed paths with a patrol. Blood Eagles aren't exactly known for their discretion, so they attacked the patrol. That was an unsurprisingly poor decision. Unfortunately, they weren't careful with you, and you hit your head when they dropped you. You were already unconscious, so you didn't feel it at the time. I'm feeling it now, that's for sure. Be careful. You need four stitches in the back of your head. I think you'll want to change your clothes when you're feeling up to it. Your uniform got kind of torn up in the struggle, and... Well, there's also some blood on it. Uh, I didn't even notice. It's fine. We mostly just wanted to get you tucked in so you'd be as comfortable as possible when you woke up. Beth and the Brotherhood are probably out looking for me. And for Greg, too. I hope he's alright. For what it's worth, the patrol said it was just you and the Blood Eagles. No other Brotherhood personnel. Alive or... you know... He wouldn't have abandoned me. Of course not. I'm sure there's a reasonable explanation. I I'm just... It's really hard to focus right now, Doctor. I'm sorry. What has me concerned is that this might not be random Blood Eagle mayhem. What do you mean? They might have been targeting me, specifically. Why would they do that? Ransom? No, not Ransom. It's... I'm sorry. I think I need to rest. Here, Doctor. I have that chem for you. This will help you with that, Odessa. And you'll feel much better when you wake up. I promise. Then we can talk a bit more. Does that sound okay? Yes, it does. Thank you, Doctor. And thank you, Dex. It's my pleasure, Odessa. Doctor? You'll feel a little pinch. Then you'll be off to Dreamland for a bit. Poor thing. I'm glad the patrol was there to help her. I just wish they'd been there a few moments sooner. I don't even want to think about what Blood Eagles would have done with her. They're monsters. They are. And considering some of the creatures that we've both seen wandering around Appalachia, that's saying something. So, when are we going to tell her? Let's see how she's feeling when she wakes up. She's been through a lot. I don't want to pile that on top of everything. Neither do I. She's important to Lily, and that means she's important to me. Don't worry. We'll make sure she's taken care of. And who knows? Maybe she can help us figure out what the hell's going on here. Yeah, this cage is nicely gilded and all, but I'm ready to go home. Those blood eagles may have done us a hell of a favor. Nobody's gonna come looking for us, but it sounds like an army might be on their way to find her. So, we have a plan. Yes, I believe we do. Now we just need to know where to execute it, whether it's Flagrante Bello or somewhere else. My father will come through. You'll see. What's that? Message coming in. Hmm. Enclave frequency. That'll be Valeria returning my message. She was off doing whatever it is she does when I reached out. This is Knight Robert Merriweather. Go ahead. Greetings, Knight. We would like to speak to Elizabeth Kirby. We believe she should be nearby. This is Elizabeth Kirby. Paladin Leila Romani is in the room as well. Who is this? We are Modus. Well, this is a surprise. Who or what is a Modus? Modus is an Enclave AI. Been around since before the war. It runs all the Enclave facilities over at the White Spring and handles all their surveillance activities. But why is it contacting us directly? I suppose there's only one way to find out. Uh, what can we do for you, Modus? The Kovac Muldoon satellite platform has been monitoring your father's activities throughout the day. He should be arriving at your location very soon. We calculate an 84.1% chance 
that he has successfully retrieved information on the location of Scribe Valdez, and that the location is an underground compound beneath the area known as Flagrante Bello. Just as we suspected. Commander Kirby visited three Blood Eagle camps in succession. Commander? My father was a commander in the Royal Navy Reserve before the war. I guess Modus's programming defaults to military titles. Although the Kovac does not provide the granularity necessary to see exactly what he did at those camps, it appears that his intelligence gathering methods were efficient. Oh dear. What do you mean? We detected fewer life signs when he departed each camp than had been present when he arrived. After he left the third camp, he scouted the Flagrante Bello area. We used the opportunity to analyze the presence of personnel in the area, and we will share that analysis with Mr. Watkins. Thank you, Modus. Charles needs all the intel he can get his hands on, but I have to ask. Why are you doing this? It's certainly not out of the goodness of your heart. I see our reputation precedes us, but you are correct. Our purpose is twofold. First, like you, we have been monitoring the Morning Star's increased level of engagement and activity in the region. We feel that if it is allowed to continue unchecked, it represents a potential threat to our goals. And second? We recently became aware of your credentials. We were already familiar with those of your parents, but you, you represent something different. We know what you are capable of, perhaps even better than you know yourself. We stand ready to provide assistance in the form of intelligence and analysis. We also have access to other technology that may be of use during the operation itself. And in return for this assistance... I'll owe you. I understand now. But you need to understand that if anything happens to Odessa during this operation, that debt will be null and void. We find that condition... acceptable. We believe that Scribe Valdez has an important part to play in the... rehabilitation of Appalachia. So her retrieval is in our interests as well. What about ground support? Will the Colonel be sending any Enclave personnel to assist? We cannot say. The Colonel is assessing the situation. That is all we know. We are simply a facilitator. The final decision is hers. Let's hope that she reaches that decision quickly. We don't know what he's going to do with her, and we don't know how much time we have. I assure you that the Colonel has all of the information necessary to make a decision, and will make one in due course. Thank you, Modus. We will transmit the data as soon as you are ready. There's a blank holotape in the terminal connected to this radio. You can transmit at any time. Transmission begins on my mark. Mark. We will be in touch. Well, that was... something. Can we trust them? The Enclave? Of course not. But we're going to need all the help we can get, and having an eye in the sky could prove invaluable. So could an orbital weapons platform. Indeed. Knight Kirby. I'm not gonna get used to that anytime soon. When you give the data to Mr. Watkins, please ask him to perform his analysis using an air-gapped system. Of course. The last thing you need is Modus's tendrils inside your systems. Just be careful that those tendrils don't get inside your systems either, as it were. I've made deals with devils before, but right now the focus is on getting Odessa back. I believe I may be able to assist with that. Your timing is impeccable as always, Dad. I'm glad you're here, Mr. Kirby. We have an overall strategy in place, but we're waiting to confirm the location before we finalize it and get down to the details. I understand you may be able to do just that. Oh. Checking up on me, are you? No, but it seems that Enclave has been. That's not surprising. I'd love to have access to the eye in the sky for a little while. What did you find out? Our suspicions were correct. Odessa is being held at Flangrante Bello. 
It took me a bit to find the right group of blood eagles, but once I did, they revealed that they were hired to kidnap her and handed her over just outside that area. Getting the information out of them was a doddle. Not how I'd describe it necessarily, but go on. Thank you. Now, the people I uh, spoke with told me that they were instructed to attack Odessa and Knight Carlson on their way back here. Knight Carlson was to be incapacitated but not killed, and Odessa was to be taken. This is not a complaint, Mr. Kirby, but why were they instructed to not kill Knight Carlson? Surely that would have been simpler and wouldn't have left a loose end. Indeed. I wondered the same thing. They didn't know why, only that they were told not to kill him. I think they were quite impressed that they managed to fulfill that part of the request. And Lily, I know you're not going to want to hear this, but Odessa was injured in the attack. She was knocked unconscious during the struggle. Oh no. I know, dear. I'm worried about her as well. But they did reveal something rather interesting related to that. The people they handed her over to were highly displeased, but seemed unconcerned. They indicated that they had medical facilities of some sort available, and that she'd be taken care of. Did you get any insight into who took her? That part was interesting as well. They said that they had got the assignment from a raider boss that they'd been doing jobs for over the past few months. But they didn't care about the specifics, because, and I quote, Caps are caps. Very on brand. But I wonder, could this just be raiders looking for a quick ransom payday and not the Morning Star? Flagrante Bello was in raider hands last we knew, after all. It's possible. But I feel that the Brotherhood would have received a ransom demand by now, if that were the case. And Moda seemed fairly certain that this was something much bigger than that. I need to get the data you sent over to Charles so we can see exactly what we're up against. Once we have a more concrete idea of what we're up against, we'll work that plan up. I did a bit of recruiting before I visited the Blood Eagles as well. We're going to have an interesting team, that's for certain. Hello, Doctor. Odessa! You seem to be feeling better. I am, thank you. And I found something to wear, too. I haven't seen a wardrobe like that since... since Beth's place. You miss her? I do, yeah. Lily is a special girl. I watched her grow up. She's the closest thing I'll ever have to a daughter. A family is something that eluded me. I was always about the work. What we were doing was so important, and I let that get in the way. I didn't understand balance until it was too late. I'm sorry. So am I, Odessa. So am I. But that's all in the past. Can I ask you something? Of course. What's on your mind? I did a little bit of walking around since I was feeling better and nobody was around. And... What is it? Did you lock me in? No, I didn't lock you in. I didn't want to tell you this until you were feeling better, but... Well, we're all locked in, it seems. We're prisoners? No. I mean, I suppose in a way we are, but... Well, I can't claim to understand it, but it doesn't seem malicious. Being held prisoner isn't malicious? I'm sorry, I, I'm not explaining it well. What I can tell you is that they seem to want to... Fix people. Think about it. You were rescued from Blood Eagles, and you were hurt. You know all about my... struggles. Did they fix you? I thought that maybe you were just, you know, having a good day. I'm not all the way back, but they've already helped a great deal. And what about Dex? How is he being fixed? I don't know. Whatever it is, he doesn't like talking about it, and... I didn't want to pry. But he's as in the dark as we are, and he's done nothing but help me. I was in rough shape. It felt like... well, it felt like the end. And then, one day, I woke up here, 
Do you remember me telling you that vault Tech had taken all of the equipment from the lab under my house? Yes, I remember. That equipment is here, along with a lot more. Hmm. So is vault Tech holding us prisoner? I'm still not convinced that the people who took it were really vault Tech. And this, I think, makes that even less likely. I mean, why would vault Tech be so secretive with me? I was one of their senior researchers. If I've learned one thing from Beth, it's that vault Tech's motives are rarely clear, and they're even less often above board. I'm afraid you're right about that. But now that you're feeling better, perhaps we can- Odessa, a little help over here? Let's get her onto that bed. On it. Doctor, can you get some disinfectant and a painkiller? Of course. What happened? Blood Eagles drugged her and tried to snatch her, but a patrol was in the right place at the right time. I have a lot of questions right now, Dex. Are you interacting with these patrols? Who are they? Why are they keeping us here? I promise we can talk after we get her stabilized. I don't know much, but I'll tell you what I do. All right. Oh my god. Dr. Holcomb. You know her? I do. I met her... out there. She helped my girlfriend get through a medical issue. This can't be a coincidence. Dr. Holcomb knew Beth from the vault too, even though Beth didn't remember her. From the vault? I don't remember a Dr. Holcomb, but then again I didn't know every doctor there. Mr. Kirby said the same thing. Andrew and I traveled in the same circles, so that's not all that surprising. Alright, let me have a quick look to see what we're dealing with. Oh my god! M! What's wrong, Doctor? What is it? This... this isn't Rebecca Holcomb. This is... my M. Emily Troiani. She was supposed to go to Washington to coordinate the resumption of some cooperative research they were doing up there. We thought we'd see each other in a few months, but... well, we didn't. This is Emily Troiani? The head of the project? She must have been trying to keep a low profile. So low that she couldn't even come to see me. Uh... Where... am I? Shh. Try not to talk. Tony? Is that really you? Or did they stick me in a simulation? It's me! No simulation necessary! Em, I need to give you something to counteract what those Blood Eagles tried to knock you out with. It's the same thing I gave Odessa. And I'm already feeling much better. Uh, that sounds very appealing right now. All right, just a little pinch. I'll see you soon. And M. Yes, Tony? I love you. I love you too. All right, she's sleeping. A few hours should do her wonders. Dex, she knows. I knew it wouldn't take long. I'm hoping that they'll let you go once you're fully recovered, but... I don't know. I'm sorry. For what it's worth, everything's been provided for us. Food, water, living quarters, medical facilities, a surprisingly robust library. Everything except freedom. Looks like everyone's here, Paladin. Shall we do a roll call? Yes, I think that's a good idea. If I may have everyone's attention, we've gone over both our strategy and our tactics. Our goal is to find the entrance to the Morning Star's underground compound, and then to get me inside. Once that happens, each team is to withdraw to a safe distance. I'll take care of the rest. Grey team, are you ready? Ray team stands ready. Knight Banks, you're in command of our largest single force. Is Blue team ready? At Victorium! Elder Neiman. The devotees of the Most Holy Mothman will be guided by his true light as we join the struggle against this Morning Star and his blasphemous false light. Commander Jones. The responders vowed long ago to do everything we could to protect Appalachia and its people. Scribe Valdez is one of the good ones, and the new responders are fully prepared to do our part to help get her back safely. Lieutenant Connors, is Black Team ready? The Enclave is ready to assist, and the Colonel sends her regards. Foundation, what say you? We're ready to fight for the future of Appalachia. And lastly, Major Kelly, 
Can we count on the support of the Free States? Yes, ma'am. It's incumbent upon the Free States to help ensure the freedom of Appalachia and everyone in it. And from what you and your mother have told us, this is the biggest existential threat we've had since Thorpe and his raiders. Thank you, everyone. I heard you might need a hand. Knight Carlson, are you sure you're up to this? I'm the one who was responsible for her being taken in the first place. If I'm breathing, I'm gonna help get her back. Thank you, Knight. I could use someone watching my back. How about you stick with me? Yes, ma'am. The forces are yours, Knight Kirby. You may give the order when ready. I know that this group was only assembled a short time ago, and I know that there may be some lingering factional tensions between some of you. You're here for different reasons. Some of you are here because you owe a debt to me or to another member of my family, and that debt has come due. Some of you are here because Odessa Valdez is your sister in arms. Some of you are here simply because you feel it is the right thing to do. Regardless of what your particular personal motivations may be, as of this moment, we are a single, unified force with a firmly defined goal to retrieve Scribe Valdez from the clutches of a person whom we believe presents an existential threat to us, to the people we love, and to the place that we've adopted as our home. Scribe Valdez has already been taken. Powerful technology has already been looted and may already be in use. The whole fury and might of the enemy may soon be turned on us. And so we make our stand here on this ground that has already seen so much blood spilled, so many lives lost. Based upon the intelligence that's been provided to us, we expect resistance. We expect a fight. I suspect that the Battle of Flagrante Bello is about to begin. When most of you woke up this morning, you were blissfully ignorant about the Morning Star and the rapidly rising threat that he poses. I'm sure some of you wish that that was still the case, and I'm sure some of you long to be at home with your loved ones and not standing with me armed and armored to join the effort to mitigate that threat. I cannot restore your ignorance, nor can I restore your bliss, but I can offer you an opportunity. If anyone here gathered has no stomach to this fight, then please let them depart and depart quickly. Go, no one will stop you. We will wish you only a safe journey back to your home and to your bed. But those who remain, we few, we happy few, we band of sisters and of brothers, for anyone who stands and chooses to fight with me will forever be my kin, with a bond formed not by blood, but in blood. In years to come, people will look back on this day and remember. They will remember how we, a hastily assembled group of disparate groups of disparate people with disparate interests came together to truly reclaim this land. The Morningstar's newly bold action makes it clear that he seeks to break us. If we can stand up to him, then Appalachia may be free, and the life of our little portion of the world may move forward into broad, sunlit uplands. But if we fail, then Appalachia, including all of what we have known and cared for, will sink into the abyss of a new dark age, made more sinister by the lights of perverted science. If not by his hand alone, by the hands of those who know, through our inaction or our failure, that Appalachia is ripe for the taking. If we prevail, the Morning Star will not be the last threat we face, but what we will prove today is that we can and will, together, face whatever threats may arise. We will rise again and unite again whenever our home needs to be defended. We make the future we deserve. Today will be remembered as the day the tide turned. The day we prove that we were not just members of the Brotherhood of Steel, or the Settlers, or the followers of the Mothman. We are not free staters, nor residents of Foundation. We stand together as one.
Pin down over here. Elder Neiman, you're the closest to Blue Team's position. Can you assist? We shall protect Knight Banks and his team from the aggressors. Has anyone located an entrance? Concentrate on areas that are more heavily protected. Nothing yet, Beth. I'm starting to wonder if this wasn't a wild goose chase. It isn't. Our intel is solid and so is our analysis. Damn it! It feels like we're being steered to the left. Maybe, but don't read too much into it. Just stay focused. Thank you, Greg. Shit! Ambush! We cut off. Any use in our vicinity, we are under heavy fire. I see you, Lily. But we can't get to you. There's a phalanx between you and the rest of us. Damn it! Let's hunker down and hope that the cavalry can fight through that before we get overrun. Everyone, listen. If I'm captured or killed, someone needs to find that entrance and retrieve Odessa. I don't care who it is, but get her back. No response? Comms are jammed. Jesus. Miss Kirby, we have detected that you are in need of assistance. Bit of an understatement, Modus. We believe we have identified the entrance to the underground facility where Scribe Valdez may be held. This analysis is based- You can explain it all to me later. We have more immediate problems at the moment. Ah, yes. You do. There is a large group of, hmm, super mutants advancing on your position. Shall I eliminate them? Yes, please. We have detected no friendly forces in their immediate vicinity. Orbital strike incoming. Please brace yourselves. Can you get rid of the wall of mercenaries between us and the rest of our teams? We can. We calculate a 61.3% probability that we can eliminate the enemy forces without collateral damage. That's not good enough. Then we recommend that you move to the entrance that we identified. Other hostile forces are approaching, but you can beat them there if you move now. 46 meters, bearing 290. I've downloaded the coordinates to your pit boy. 290. That's the direction they seem to be pushing us. Must have just been random. All right, Modus, we're on the move, but our comms are still jammed. Wait, how are you communicating with us? We have ways of defeating more common methods of radio jamming. We will inform Lieutenant Connors of your situation and your plans. We will also attempt to restore general communications. Have her put my father in charge and coordinate a withdrawal to Atlas. We will. And we will monitor their withdrawal and handle any forces that choose to pursue them. No collateral damage, Modus. Of course not, Miss Kirby. Good luck. You believe in luck? We do not. <laughs> Alright then. Thank you, Modus. Thank you, Miss Kirby. We will be in touch. Are you good to move, Greg? You've been wearing a brave face, but I can tell you're hurting. <sighs> I'm good. Let's get moving. Keep your head on a swivel. This is... Oh, wow, this is a hell of a lot of damage. But let's make sure we don't get surprised. Right. You know, you've really grown since the first time I met you, back in that lab. You were so... green. <laughs> I was, wasn't I? Get down! On our flank! Ugh! Where the hell did they come from? I don't know, but they're coming this way, and fast. A comm still jammed. I don't know. It's worth a shot. If anyone can hear me, we have a group of... six mercenaries who are heavily armed and almost on top of us. Hey, princess. I heard you were raising some hell. And you didn't invite me. Rude. Amanda! I, uh, brought some friends with me. I hope that's okay. Need a hand? Y yes, are you close? Close enough that I can take these morons out. Thank you, Amanda. Amanda, you're... you're back? Yeah, it's all face, I'm back. And I'm here to stay this time. I'm sorry I had to take off. I just, well... We have a lot to talk about. Oh no. It's all good stuff, don't worry. Now, let's get back to making sure this reunion happens. Then we can talk about ours. Okay? Okay. Oh wow, that didn't take long. I wonder how many friends she brought with her. 
However many it is, they'll come in handy when we get inside. We expected a lot of resistance topside, but the sheer amount of it makes me think we're going to need more firepower than just the two of us can provide. Are you sure that's a good idea? You said you wanted to avoid a firefight to make sure Odessa didn't get caught in the crossfire. I did, but based on what I've seen, I think that may be a chance we have to take. We're here. These are the coordinates. Let's see. There's a door here. Shit! Incoming! Are you okay? Yes. What was that? Uh, must have been booby-trapped. Sorry, I had to tackle you. It's alright. Let's open that door back up. Carefully. And wait for Amanda and her team. Uh, the explosion must have blocked it. Oh dear. I hope Amanda didn't get here yet. Amanda, are you alright? Amanda? Ugh, comms are jammed again. There must be another jammer in here. Hey, check this out. Stairs. Looks like the only option. Well, onward and downward, I suppose. This place looks... nice. Almost like a hotel. Must be a residential area. Wait. Shh. I hear people talking. Sounds like it's coming from up the hall. Must be from one of those rooms. <sighs> so, it was you all along. Yeah, yeah it was. I was lucky though. Alan seemed to go out of his way to cast suspicion on himself. That made things a whole lot easier. Your weapons, please. Slowly. Here. I think it's time that you met the man himself. He's been waiting for you. Beth! And then Carlson! I knew you'd find me. There's a lot going on, but let's get everybody out of here first and we can talk about it at Atlas. Dr. Holcomb is here too, but she's not Dr. Holcomb, she's really Dr. Troyani, the head of Project Mind's Eye. You. Hello, Kirsha. It's nice to see you again. I hope you didn't mind the little show we put on for you out there. Had to keep up appearances, you know? What's going on? You two know each other? Yes, we do. Quite well, in fact. Odessa Valdez, I'd like you to meet Brian Reardon. Or as I suppose he preferred to be addressed, the Morning Star. Once Upon a Wasteland, Episode 9, The Audacity of Doing This, was produced and directed by Brad Williams and written by D.K. Trueno. Starring Letitia Lemon as Elizabeth Kirby and Vitriol Plays as Odessa Valdez. Also starring Lucy Middleton as Amanda Otis. Penal Pineapple as Andrew Kirby, and John Laurie as Knight Allen Banks. Featuring Rob Cunningham as Knight Robert Merriweather, Paul Reinbach as Dr. Anthony Flagler, Jake Johnston as Dex, Benjamin Campbell as Knight Gregory Carlson, Crystal Sherry as Casey Barksdale, Aria Velvet as Dr. Emily Troiani, Pandora Beatrix as Paladin Layla Romani, Maria Cheshire as Lieutenant Cindy Connors, Benjamin Johnson as Elder Neiman, Sergeant Clink as Major Kelly, and Wyatt West as the Foundation Representative. Special guest appearance by Ray Middleton as Commander Johns and Brad Williams as Modus. And I'm your narrator, Ashley Secon. Please join us for our next episode, Episode 10, I Shall Take Care. How well do you know your video game lovers? 
Do you want to know more about your favorite relationship options? Have you ever wondered how your video game bays stack up against all the rest of the delectable digital dates? I'm Genesis, a Mass Effect nerd and commander of the SS Innuendo, and on Two Girls One Ship, we analyze, rate, and review all that the world of video game romances has to offer. And I'm Vervada, the hopeless romantic cat lady, character design fangirl, and lifelong gamer. Come check out our podcast, Two Girls, One Ship, on all your favorite podcast places. And remember, beauty is in the eye of the controller. I'm Brad Williams, the creator of Once Upon a Wasteland, a Fallout story. I'd like to thank you for demonstrating your support for our show by listening. We hope that you'll continue to join us as we follow Beth and Odessa's journey toward Happily Ever After. If you'd like a peek behind the curtain, please check out our minisodes, where we'll do deep dives on a specific behind-the-scenes aspect of the show. Things like character studies, background information on the story or a specific episode, and even on the creative process in general. Don't be surprised if members of the cast visit from time to time as well. We'll also read any new five-star reviews. For more information on our show, you can visit our website, onceuponawasteland.com, where you can find show information, scripts for each episode, artwork, and more. You can also find us on Twitter at onceupon76pod. If you like this episode, please leave a rating and review, and I hope you'll subscribe as well. And please, tell your friends. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can reach out to me directly on Twitter at onceupon76pod or via email at info at onceuponawasteland.com. Thank you. traffic and weather. Welp, looks like almost everyone's still dead, so traffic is at a standstill. <laughs> and now a word from our sponsor, because they're totally not bribing me with massive amounts of chems or anything. Seems as the stuffed shirts are back at the White Springs playing games with that total loser modus. But hey, if that's your thing, whatever. So if all you squares wanted to hear more, totally, sort of, but maybe not boring stories about rebuilding Appalachia and being all goody two-shoes, definitely not raiders, check out this thing they call a podcast, The Modus Files, whatever that's supposed to be, on Spotify, iTunes, and wherever else you listen to those things. Double ug, they're not paying me enough for this. Till later, this is Rose.